Well, good morning, guys, and I'm back on the road again. Now, you can see in the far distance, Ben Lamond up there on the hill. That's where I was yesterday and last night, and that was an amazing experience. If you haven't seen that video, check out my previous one on my Tasmanian road trip. Now, today, I'm heading over to the east coast of Tasmania. There's a couple of places there that I want to visit, and initially, I'm not sure which one I'll go to first, so I'm just going to jump in the car and see where it takes me. Come on, let's go. Now, I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but have a look at that awesome structure over there in the paddock. One of the things I've noticed on my road trip around Tasmania is just how much there is scattered around to photograph. I love this stuff. That this old, it looks like a beehive. It's some sort of, I don't know what it is, a chimney or something, but I love it. It's on a dairy farm. I've seen old buildings and I've seen um, uh, old machinery and I've seen old stone ruins. Oh, they're everywhere. I could spend weeks photographing nightscapes in Tasmania, but I've only got one week. So that's the breaks. Well, I've just pulled up at this quaint little town called St. Mary's and on my way to the east coast of Taz. And I've just dropped in, grabbed a coffee and my favorite ham, cheese and pineapple toasted sandwich. It's becoming a habit, I know that, but uh, I do love it. Now, one of the things that was a bit of a problem this morning, I thought to myself, I looked at the map and um, it said to go around the long way around from Ben Lamont. So I thought, oh, I'll take a shortcut. So, um, I took the shortcut all right, but the problem is it very quickly ended up a pretty rough dirt road. So I found myself um, with uh, an extremely dirty car. So I don't know what I'll do about that. Depends whether there's any more dirt roads, but I'm just gonna enjoy uh, lunch here in this little park. Just look at the scenery. There's mountains all around this place. It's just absolutely beautiful. I might give the car a wash later. We'll see how we go. In the meantime, coffee and sandwich. Now, I must admit that even though I'm not here, strictly speaking, as a tourist, I do very much enjoy having a look around these little country towns. And Tasmania is full of gorgeous little quaint, I would say, country towns. And uh, they're, they're unique. Everyone that I've come through has a different sort of flavour and, and um, unique perspective. And I, I like that. I think it's really good. And the view around this little place is stunning. There's mountain ranges all around it. Fantastic. Well, there's nothing like a walk along the beach to stretch out a few sore muscles. I'll tell you what, after all that rock climbing and scrambling last night on the mountain, I'm really sore today. But here I am at the town of St. Helens. Uh, the last one I was at was St. Mary's. So there's a lot of saints along this coast. This is the east coast of Tasmania. Beautiful spot here on this marina. And I'm just gonna have a bit of a wander around here and stretch my legs because later on today, I'm gonna to be heading north to Eddystone Point. There's a lighthouse up there, which I wanna photograph under the stars. A lot of those big red rocks that uh, Tasmania is well known for. So uh, yeah, looking forward to that. But as it stands at the moment, I'm just going to have a bit of a walk along this beach, stretch your legs and um, then move up the coast. I think it's really important to just sit and relax sometimes and actually create in your own mind some of the things that you'd like to produce with your photography. I know for me, especially for landscape and nightscape photographers, you've got plenty of time to think about the compositions and the things that you want to do with your photography. So that's what I'm doing here. Before I move on, I'm just going to take some deep breaths and just get my heart and my mind sort of in sync together creatively. <sighs> Now 
It's interesting, you know, the other morning when I was up at Cradle Mountain, I was chatting with quite a few photographers. And that's one of the things I love, firstly, about photography. You just talk to people um, because we're, we're all there doing the same thing. We were trying to capture the sunrise and the, it was about a 30 or 40 kilometer per hour wind blowing straight into our face and there was spray from Dove Lake going all over the lenses. And yet we were there enjoying the moment. And I think that's really important with photography to do that, regardless of the end result. I'm not sure if we got a good end result. Um, and I met two girls from Hobart, who, and one of them I'd already followed on Instagram, and I thought, gee, this is amazing, it's just such a small world. And another bloke I met from Sydney, and uh, we got into a really good conversation about photography and the cameras, filters, all that sort of stuff. And, you know, you, you just have to be in the moment, don't you? And if I hadn't have been traveling around Tasmania, I wouldn't have met those people. So I guess I'm a bit philosophical about things like that. I think that you put yourself into positions to interact with other people and you just don't know what can come of it. So again, we shared ideas, we shared creative ideas, we shared how we go about doing things and, and the mindset that we have and how we cope with disappointments. I think that's really important for, for landscape and nightscape photography in general. Yeah, I guess I'm just in a bit of a contemplative mood at the moment and sitting here watching the beach and the boats and the birds go by. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good creative space to be in. Well, here we are at the Eddystone Point Lighthouse. Gee, it was hard work getting here. I took two wrong turns. The GPS took me up a dirt track. When I got about two k's in, it said four wheel drive only. Great, that's all I need. I had to turn all the way back. The signage around here is terrible. But anyway, Andrew, Doors, you warned me about that. So um, I know what you're talking about now, mate. Anyway, so I'm here and I'm gonna now scout some locations to see what I think would work best. I've got to get a long way back from this um, lighthouse to fit it in, but there's some rocks over there, sort of north of here, which I'm hoping I can shoot across, get the lighthouse in, and the Milky Way off in the distance rising up above the ocean tonight. So I'm gonna go and have a scout now. Okay, well, I've just done a quick calculation, and I reckon I might be able to get this little lighthouse with the Milky Way core coming down behind it over there. This is just a small, section I reckon it might have been the old one so we'll find out I suppose when I try and do it but um, I think it's promising so um, yeah I'll just have a look around all right well right here we have the famous Bay of Fires rocks with the red uh, I don't know what it is but they're colored orange and red and they're fabulous now I've worked out that a composition, if I put the camera just over the other side there, facing down that way past, for example, these rocks here, I'll get a beautiful picture with the core coming down behind the rocks. That's one of the shots I want. The other one I want to do is go a bit further away and incorporate the lighthouse. So I'm just going to go and investigate that now and see if I can find a composition. All right, so I reckon this is just about the spot where I need to be. Um, I can shoot a wide expanse here. We're getting the rocks here in the foreground, as well as the water in the bay there. Uh, the lighthouse over on the right-hand side and the Milky Way core rise, rising up here on the left-hand side of the frame. Now, I've just used my PhotoPills app and I can see that's exactly where it's gonna be. Now, normally, I'd have a little bit of trouble lighting up all these rocks, but tonight, there's about, I would estimate about a 40% uh, moon, which is gonna do that job without any problems at all. So, I think, this is good, I'll just have a bit of a look around there, but I think I've got at least two or three compositions right here, so that's good.
Well, here we are, the morning after the night. And this is the exact spot where I was to shoot quite a number of our nightscapes last night. You can see the lighthouse over there, and it was casting its beam all the way across this bay. And it looked beautiful. I'm so pleased that I came all this way up to Eddystone Point and the lighthouse. It's certainly out of the way. There's not many people come here. This morning there's a few fishing boats arriving, the people heading off on the boat ramp over there. It's so calm. Yesterday it was windy and uh, quite wild. Today is not a breath of wind. The weather's changed as you can see. There's plenty of clouds but I'm not too concerned about the clouds now because I'm going home shortly after this event. I'm making my way back to Devonport. I did quite a bit of experimenting with shutter speed last night. Remember I said there was going to be about a 45% crescent moon? The moon illuminated these rocks beautifully and gave me the, all the light I needed to shoot. The lighthouse was spinning around, casting its beam as they do. So I was experimenting with shorter shutter speeds to try and freeze the movement of the lighthouse. Doing that with a very short shutter speed meant I had to lift the ISO to extreme levels. And I normally wouldn't shoot just a single shot at ISO 12,000. I was really happy with how they all came up. Um, and I think with the moon and with a little bit of cloud actually creates a bit of drama. And I don't mind that at all. single shots, time lapse, panorama. I reckon I gave everything a shot last night. I was here for quite a long time, had two cameras running. As you know, I love time lapse. And because of the clouds moving through the scene, the time lapse clip is just amazing. Love it. So while coming to Tasmania for this trip, it was important for me to experience things that I don't normally see back home. And of course, this is part of the Bay of Fires and these boulders and the particular color that they um, have is just unique to this location and, and quite significant. And it's a beautiful location. You could spend hours just wandering around, looking at the, at the grandeur of this landscape. And all of the locations that I've visited so far in Tasmania have been like that. Cradle Mountain, I mean, there's nothing like that where I come from. And then of course, over in the, in the west with the, with the mountains and the rainforests all mixed into one. So I guess I've come to the end of my Tasmanian road trip adventure and I'm gonna head back soon to catch the ferry back home. And I guess I'm just reflecting on how it's impacted me and how I feel, you know, my journey here was to capture nightscapes and as difficult as that is in uh, remote locations like this, the challenge is certainly worthwhile taking up. And now during the daylight hours, I can just relax and I can soak in the atmosphere of the place. And I think as photographers, we need to do more and more of that. So thanks for following me on this journey. It's been such a great adventure and I hope you've got something out of it as much as I have. I've um, certainly enjoyed it. It's been challenging. It's been something that uh, I've been planning for quite a while and I didn't um, envisage, envisage encountering some of the things I've encountered. Uh, the snowstorm up on Cradle Mountain was certainly surreal, but worth every second of it. So anyway, until the next video, and I've got a few things up my sleeve coming soon, I'll look forward to seeing you guys then. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you then.